invite you into your word to us, Lord God, as we come to seek you. Lord God, we seek the favor of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, as we grow and learn. Lord, to be with us at this moment, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All right, so John chapter 1. And let's see, start off in verse 45. Read down to the end and fill in, or maybe it's that. John 145. We talked about Philip last week. So Andrew gets Philip, and Philip findeth Nathaniel, and says unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, of, of the son of Joseph. And we looked at that last week. Andrew and Philip did not say, come to church. They explained to the people they witnessed to who Jesus was. We looked at that. In verse 46, Nathaniel said unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And we read about Jonah. Mm -hmm. Philip says unto him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming and said unto him, Behold an Israelite, so Nathanael's an Israel, Jew, indeed whom no guile. So, what we see here, we have a purely Jewish man, Nathanael, purely Jewish Philip, Jewish Andrew, the, the, the life of Jesus Christ and the Gospels are purely Jewish. Matthew is written to Jewish people. It's not a church age Gospel. Now John is the later Gospel. His is written late where you even see the Pauline epistles of, of, the, of the Gospel, which you don't see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But you got to remember, up to the, even the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you see it is Jewish in flavor. Some Gentiles. But you don't start, you don't start to see Gentiles until Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius. And then Paul gets fed up with the Jews and then moves to the Gentiles. So Jesus says to Nathaniel, whom Israel indeed, and there's no guile. Guile is crafty, deceit, cunning. So Nathaniel, by the words of Jesus Christ, is an outstanding character, according to Jesus Christ. And an outstanding character that he is, well, he needs the Lord Jesus Christ too. And Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus said unto, unto him, Before that Philip called thee, When I saw thou under the fig tree. So Nathaniel agrees to Jesus' description. You know, I'm an Israelite. I'm not deceitful. I'm not crafty. And he, he acknowledges that Jesus never met him, and he never met Jesus. And yet Jesus sees him under the fig tree. Jesus knows what's going on. Even we don't think we know that he goes on. Proverbs says, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the good and the evil. So, we're going to come back to this fig tree. We're going to read and come back. Close off this chapter. So, the fig leaf, in the Bible, is self-righteous. Genesis 3 and verse 7, Adam and Eve took fig leaves and sold themselves aprons to cover up their sin. The fig leaf pictures self-righteous. We'll look at that tree in a moment. So we're seeing verse, eight, eight, verse 1, verse 48. We see the power of Jesus Christ that only God can know when God's not there. Even the devil does not have that power. The devil has to call his devils in. 
Death, the devil's not omnipresent. The devil's not omnipotent. I forget the third one. The devil's not all-knowing. But Jesus is. And what we see in verses 40, 40, 47 48, we see a remarkable statement that, you know, just read your Bible. You saw the third one coming and said, and Behold, an interest indeed, who know God, Nathan said, and what knows me, Jesus before Bill called, and Nathan, and I'm in brother, and chapter two. Okay, I'm done reading my Bible. You realize what happened in verses 47 48. Jesus already knew, and Nathaniel said, How did you know that happened? Because he's God. Verse 49, Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabboni, or Rabbi. Now we've already read that that means master. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew, call, well he will say, Call no man your master, for one is your master, that is God the Father. So, alright, look here. Nathanael answered and said unto him, him is Jesus. Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. That's Jesus. And art the King of Israel. That's Jesus. And Jesus answered said to him, Call no man Rabbi. There's one Rabbi in, in heaven. That's your Father. That's not what Jesus says there. And then when Thomas says, My Lord, my God, Jesus is like, Well, wait a minute. Hold on. You got that wrong, Thomas. No, he doesn't. Jesus acknowledges the rabbi, the son of God, the king of Israel, without debate. When later on in his ministry, he's going to tell us in the book of Matthew, he's going to say, call no man your father, call no man rabbi, master. Yet he allows Nathaniel to do it because he is God. And the Jehovah Witnesses go and deny what the scriptures say. Son of God. That's exactly who he is. The Son of God. I mean, Jesus is God, and yet Jesus is the Son of God. There's that very fine line. There is God the Father. There is God the Son. They are one, but there's a very... You cannot explain the truth. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses and all the religions get messed up. I mean, the, the, Jew, the Jews had the problem with Jesus is... We Gentiles worship two gods. God the Father and Jesus Christ. No, we don't. They're one, yet they're three. Yet they're one in three, but they're three, but they're one. You got it confused. And that's the whole realm of religion. That, you know, you got two gods. Well, Jesus is not God. God is God, and Jesus, well, he's a good man, he's a good teacher, but he's not. That's the realm. When Nathan, when Nathan calls him the rabbi, the master, and the son of God, he is calling him master God and the son of God. Even Nebuchadnezzar with Meshach in the, go in the fire, he says, I behold the son of God. In Proverbs chapter 30, he said, what is the son's name? So we see that son of God, we see God. And then, he makes a remarkable statement for us. Thou art the king of Israel. The Jewish people were looking for the Messiah, the king. They were not looking for Calvary. In John chapter 6, we ever, Lord willing, get there. He, he feeds the multitude and he backs off them because he's good. they're going to make me king. They, they want Jesus Christ to conquer Rome. They want Jesus Christ to destroy the Roman government and feed them like he did in chapter 6 and like he did in the wilderness with the manna and provided them water. They want a complete theocracy of God the King and being fed and being watered. Nathanael says, King of Israel, I'm looking for a king. He does not say the Savior of Israel. He doesn't say the Passover Lamb of Israel. He doesn't say the Lamb of God like John says. 
They're not looking to Calvary. And the fact is that here is Jesus standing up before Pilate, the Roman government, and they're about to crucify him. That is a failure because that's not what we're looking for. Get down off that cross and, and just live yourself. Get off that cross and destroy the Roman government. Then we'll believe who you are. That's not the first advent. That's the second advent. And churches and Christians got that all confused. Scott, you know, oh, Daniel and them and, and Abraham, they all look forward to Calvary. Not Nathan. No. He's looking for the king. He's jumping all the way over Calvary. They never, they never saw the church age, by the way. He jumps all the way over Calvary and sees the throne of David, Jesus Christ, in the second advent in the millennium. That's what he sees. And by the way, Jesus Christ is never king of the church. So when you've got hymns, you're singing as a Christian to your king. I don't sing the king because he's not our king. He's the king of Israel. Now the only time he'll be king of the, of the Christians is we are made kings in the inheritance in the, in the millennium and he is king of king and lord of lords. Not all Christians are going to get the kingship. You earn that reward. So there's going to be Christians in the millennium, I don't know what happened, but they're not going to have that reign. They're not going to have that authority. They're not going to have that title. So Nathaniel, Jesus Christ, is 30 years old, shows up on the scene. He, he is going to begin his ministry. Oh, I see the Savior of the cross, the Lamb of God. Listen, we just read that John proclaimed the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is Calvary. Andrew and Philip are going out. We found the Messiah. We looked at that. All right, as a result of seeing the Messiah, um, Philip tells in verse 43, of whom that Moses spoke of, the law and the prophets, Jesus of Nazareth. Here he is. Andrew tells uh, Peter, we found the Messiahs. 49, here's our master, here's our God, here's our rabbi, here is the Son of God, here is our King. There's no suffering. Nathaniel's not looking forward, looking forward to a cross. He's looking for a throne. And there hasn't been a throne since Jeconiah or Kaniah in the times of Jeremiah. And Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. We'll look at that in a moment. Believeth thou? Jesus, Jesus walks up and says, I, see you, I saw you under the fig tree you know, before Philip talked to you. He's like, wow. Okay, you're, you're the one. That's the same faith we have. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's all I need to do. I need to believe. Yeah, boom. There's the same faith that we got that Nathaniel has. He heard the word. Jesus said, I saw you under a fig tree. That's the word. It's not the gospel, but he believed. He says, So under the fig tree thou believe, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things in thee. He's going to see leprosy healed. He's going to see the blind are going to see. He's going to see the lame's going to walk. He's going to see devils cast out of the people. He's going to see all kinds of things. And he says unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Hereafter you shall see heavens open. They will. And angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. We'll look at that in a moment. Now Nathaniel means gift of Jehovah or Jehovah's gift. The Nathan is a gift. And the A-E-L or A-L in your Bible or J-E in the Bible or J-A in the Bible. That means Jehovah. The J-E in Jesus is Jehovah. The S-U-S -S saved. Jehovah saved. Daniel. D-A-N is judge. The I-E-L. 
is Jehovah. Jehovah is judge, or Jehovah will judge. I mean, those Hebrews and Greek things we can learn. So what we have here, and we're, I think we're going to work our way backwards, is he says you'll see angels ascending and descending. That's Jewish. And I'll show you why. Genesis 28. Genesis 28. That's Jewish. We don't see angels. Now the Bible says we may entertain angels unaware. Now there are religions out there where they see angels. The Mormons believe Bologna. The Muslims believe Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel and Michael, I forget which one now. Catholics see angels everywhere. The New Age movement, it's all angels. And Paul says about angels, if an angel brings not the gospel that he proclaimed, let them be considered a curse. As Christians, we see by faith, we don't see angels. Now, in Acts chapter 10, an angel came to Cornelius, and the angel did not tell the gospel. The angel gave the message, go get Peter, and he'll explain to you salvation. If an angel came... To, we're saved here. If we have an unsaved friend, an angel comes up to him, the only thing that angel can tell about salvation is you need to go get a Christian. You need to, or name that Christian. Because an angel can't tell you how to be redeemed because an angel's never been redeemed. So if an angel comes down and says, worship Mary, worship this man, that's a fallen angel. That's an angel of the devil. We don't see angels. And the Bible says we may have entertained angels unaware, not even knowing. Somewhere in our life, God may send an angel to try us and tempt us. We talked about that trying and tempting. And we had no idea it may have been an angel. And the world, not the Christians, go gaga over angels. And there are Christians that do too. Listen, angels are heavenly be beings and there are angels that are devilish beings. That's all the Christians should know. They're not going to give you no special revelation. Well, the book of Revelation. That's not, that's not Gentile. That's not church. That's Jewish. That's Jewish. You see, we've got to divide our Bible. Is it church age? Is it Jewish? Or is it for the world? The, the classification of the Bible is three ways. Is it written to the world? Is it written to the church? Or is it written to the Jewish people? Who is the passage of Scripture written to? Now you may have all three. You may have Hebrew and church. But when we look at the context of the Bible, we've got to look at who is it addressed to. Matthew, Mark, Luke are written to Jews. Hebrews. Oh, Matthew 24, the signs of the times are coming. Not for the church, for the tribulation period. That's where everybody's getting in trouble today. It's the sign of the times. It's the time of the rapture. There is no prophecy of the rapture of signs and wonders. The rapture can happen at any moment and there is no sign or wonder to say, all right, look for, look for the rapture today, right now. There's none. Now we look at the signs and wonders going on today. We see that one world of, of the Antichrist coming. We, it's, it's coming. And, and you, know, it's, you know, it's interesting. These people, uh, I'm going to say, I know it's after election, okay, I'm sorry, but... Oh, I want the Republican. I'm against the socialistic, uh, socialism. I'm against all that government and all that. I, I want a Republican. I want the state of America. But don't you know that the government under the Antichrist is socialism? Don't you know that the, that the government of America will be destroyed before or at least when the Antichrist comes? 
Because the government under the Antichrist is socialism. Oh, socialism is coming to America. Well, amen. Well, then so is the rapture. And we may have to live under socialism for a while before, before the, the rapture. We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. But when I see the signs of socialism taking over the world, the world, oh, I said, hell, all right, here we go, we're getting ready. Because that's the end. Now, listen, I don't want to live under a socialist government, but I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what. You're not going to because you're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ now. You want the freedom to carry your gun. You want the freedom to go drive your car. You want the freedom to go to a store. You want, the, But you don't use your freedom for Jesus. I will, and always will, no matter who is the leader or who is the government. Now, Genesis 28, let's look at verse 1 for a moment. And Isaac called Jacob. Who's Isaac and who's Jacob? Are they Gentiles? Are they Christians? Or are they Jewish? They're not Christians. And yet, you know the other day I was told that the people in the Old Testament are Christians because they look forward to the cross. Rachel's shaking her head no, but she can... She's shaking her head no to the fact that they call them Christians, but she can shake her head yes, I heard that. How can you be a Christian when there's been no Christ? That's false doctrine. I don't care. It's false doctrine. Who is Isaac and Jacob? They're Jews. Are they saved? No. Is there a church? No. Now here's another one. And I got this revelation the other day. I'm going to jump off the subject real quick. Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. So the church is supposed to give tithes because Abraham was not under the law. He was under grace. Absolutely true. Was Abraham a Jew or was he a Gentile? He was a Jew. Was Abraham saved? No, he wasn't. Was Abraham a church? No, he wasn't. Abraham was a friend of God. Abraham went to Abraham's bosom when he died. A person that's in the church that's saved today is absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's not Abraham. So don't go throwing at me tithes because of Abraham and Melchizedek. Let me know when Melchizedek shows him up, okay? Because I'll beat him off with my cane. Because he don't belong here. I'm not looking for Melchizedek. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. You know, um, Martin Luther saw Jesus Christ in his room and he threw the inkwell at him. And they say, if you go to that spot today, you will see the inkwell spot. He said, you're not the Jesus I'm looking for. Get away from me. Now, I do believe in ghosts. And I've got to be careful. Because I know the devil. The Bible says in James, uh, I'm not kidding. Second John tried the spirit. Now, I know a guy who says he, he sees... His wife died. He sees his wife's ghost and says, no, what you see is memories of your wife. Now, I believe in my life there have been ghosts. True ghosts. See, I'm looking at context. When Peter, James, and John and the other disciples are on the ship and they see Jesus, they thought they saw a spirit. They believed in ghosts. So, Genesis 28, this goes all in the realm of the angel. Who is Isaac and Jacob? They're not Christians and they're not the church. They are Jewish men. Of God, the nation of Israel, God's people. Uh, 28, 12. And he dreamed. Are we into dreams as Christians? Do we go down to the store and buy a dream book? No. 
God don't speak to us by a dream. He speaks to us by the revelation of the inspiration of the King James Bible. And I said King James Bible. No other Bible unless you've got a Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible is the Bible just before the Genesis Bible. I mean the King James Bible. So, okay, Isaac and Jacob, that's not me. I'm not Jewish. I'm not spiritual Jew. I'm not a, 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 any kind of Jew. I don't go by dreams. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascended and descended upon it. That's what we just read in John 1.49. So Nathaniel, you're going to see angels ascending and ascending. And Nathaniel, who is a Jew purely Jewish and Israelite indeed. You know what Nathaniel's going to say? Our grandpa Jacob. The story of the latter, angels descending. Remember? The Bible says Jesus came on his own, his own received on not. He's Jewish. 1 Corinthians, I think it's one eleven, says Jews require a sign. Not, not Christians. Because you remember Moses? He's talking to a bush that never burnt up in a fire. That was a sign. You remember Moses? He, he throws the rod down on the ground and he became a serpent. That's a sign. Remember Moses put his hand in his shirt and came out leprosy? That's a sign. Remember Moses turned the blood into water? That's a sign. Remember when, when Moses... I mean, I mean, God did all the power, but, but God used in Moses. Remember all the plagues upon Egypt? Those are signs. Remember God opened up the Red Sea? That's a sign. Remember God, they took a tree and they threw it in the waters, and the waters were made? That's a sign. Jews require a sign. Jacob's given a sign. Angels up and down. Bethel is the house of God. So when Jesus tells Nathaniel, you're going to see angels ascending and descending, that would bring their mind all the way back to Jacob, the Old Testament. So Jacob and Jesus. Jacob, who would be renamed later Israel. Now, as far as we know, Jacob, only Jacob saw it. But Jacob and Jesus, and Jesus said to Nathaniel, you'll see it saw the angels coming down and going up. I've never seen that. Now listen to me. This is November 13, 2020. If I start saying I see angels coming and going, you need to walk away from me and not come back and listen to me ever again. Because I'm giving you false doctrine. I'm not going to see angels coming and going. If I tell you I am, I'm making a bagel sandwich and in my bagel I see a face of an angel or Jesus, you need to say, okay, you need to go to a doctor. Mm. And yet don't, don't the media, this woman was making toast and she saw Jesus in her toes. And then they put it on eBay and sell it for thousands if not millions of dollars. And they think they're biblical, they think they're doing right. No. Now those signs and wonders are coming back in the, millenn uh, in the tribulation. Why? What's the tribulation called? Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? He's a Jew. Jews what? Require a sign. Oh, you, know, you know what the, the healing... You know why Jesus healed everybody? You know why Jesus got the devils out of everybody? You know why Jesus did what he did to show those Jewish people, I am the Messiah. You know why the Antichrist is going to do it? So he can deceive them to think that he is God. And the devil's going to do magic. And the Pentecostals are all wrapped up in this and they're worshiping the devil because signs are not for Jews. I mean, signs are they're not for the church. And they're not even for the Gentile. The Bible says the Jews require a sign in the in the and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Do you know what, you know, the, 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 uh, the tongues, 
of the charismatics. You know what it says about the tongues? It is for a sign to those that believe not. Tongues is a sign for those that don't believe. Not for the believers. They don't get that right. And then, and then it said about tongues. Let the women keep silent in the churches. That's the context of tongues. So you get a woman gets up and she starts speaking tongues. The Bible says you're to be quiet in church. So there is the angels ascending and descending. Now about that fig tree. And we're going to look at some scriptures here. It found Nathaniel sitting on the fig tree. Well, you think, big deal. All right. Judges 9. We'll see about the big deal. Judges chapter 9. Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree. And it means something. It's in the scriptures. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. So, let's see about Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree. Judges 9, 10. Or you know what we could do while you turn to Judges 9, 10. And I was told the other day that I was... I studied the Scriptures too much. Okay? And I think God took care of that person. That's all I'm going to say. Now, we could have... We, we just finished John chapter 1. I think we're going to do it. Now, I could, have, I could have done John chapter 1 one week. And I could have done John chapter 2 our second week. And this is what? Um, I don't know. As many times we met with the gospel, I think maybe we would have been done with the gospel of John. With our meeting. I think. Or very close to it. I don't know how many we've done. Now would you want me to do John chapter 1 one week. John chapter 2 the next week. John chapter 3 the next week. Or would you rather have me. Let's go slowly through the scriptures. And study everything out. And let's find out what it means Nathaniel in the fig tree. Would you rather go that way. Or we just. Alright we did another chapter for today. Well. We missed 12 verses. Well, you know, hey, time's up, time to go. Or shall we study the Bible or shall we just do a Bible study? Now, when we come across Nathaniel sitting on a fig tree, to the worldly Christian, big deal. Okay. Judges 9, 10, 11. And when we get to the end of this study, the last place we'll look is Revelation 6.13. And you tell me, was this interesting? But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, whereby me they honor God and man, and go be promoter of the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come and reign over us. And the fig tree said to them, Should I forsake my... You missed one page. Uh, I think. There you go. Alright, shall I just leave my sweetness, my good fruit to go and be promoter of the trees? So the fig tree said, hey, I'm sweet and I've got good fruit. Remember Jesus talking about good fruit and evil fruit? Remember that? That's interesting. So the Holy Spirit says that the fig tree is sweet and good fruit. Not the fig leaf, that's self-righteous. 1 Kings 4.25 And as we start turning our Bible, so does the wind. Open up the Bible and we get nice wind. I'm trying to open my Bible. 
All right. Chapter 4, verse 25. And Judah and Israel. Okay, who is that? Is that church age or is that Gentiles? That's Jewish. Dwelt safely every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Bathsheba. So here's a period of time in Judah and Israel's history. It's a nice time. It's a peaceful time. It's a good time. And every man is sitting underneath his fig tree, enjoying the sunshine. And I assume figs. I don't know if you can eat, eat figs right off the tree. Guess what Nathaniel's doing? He's sitting underneath that fig tree. And if you can eat fresh figs, I don't know. I mean, I bought Tracy a fig tree, and I didn't have any other figs. That's what he's, he's sitting and he says, I would assume, I've seen the leaf, I would assume the tree is a shady tree in the climate area. All right? So it's a time of peace and rest. 2 Kings 18.31. I'm going to turn my Bible, the wind turns it for 2 Kings 18.31. I'm not trying to pick any you know, one chapter study on. But you do miss a lot of information. You're not feeding the sheep like <coughs> Jesus told Peter. Second Kings eighteen thirty one. Hearken not to Hezekiah, this is the enemy. For thus saith the king of Assyria, the enemy, make an agreement with me by present, and come out to me. Then eat every, then eat ye every man under a vine, that was his vineyard, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye the waters. So the king of Assyria says, come up. Make ties with me, and you can come and sit under your fig tree. That's what Nathaniel's doing. He's having a good afternoon sitting underneath his fig tree. We'll get Isaiah 34 4. Isaiah 34 4. We're going somewhere with this. And I'm going to show you why Nathaniel's like, oh, I've got a king. Isaiah 34, verse 4. You know what? You take today. I'm at peace in the Lord. Today is a nice day. There's no war. There's no... I don't know. Maybe If I had a fig tree, maybe you would find me sitting underneath a fig tree today. No problem. Now, if I go to the farmer's market, I may not be sitting underneath. There may be people cussing me out, yelling at me, maybe trying to make me leave. Or life and the devil comes up and there's aggravation. But you take a, I mean, today, like I can say it's a nice, peaceful time. We've got to breathe. It's not hot. It's not cold. You know what we could do? We could take our Bibles and go find a fig tree. I don't know, maybe there's one here. I don't know. We could go sit beneath our fig tree and have a nice little Bible study. Right? You know how many of your friends are you would, hey, you know what? We're going to have Bible study Friday. Really? Where at? Well, you see, if you go to this park, there's a fig tree. We're going to sit around that fig tree. We're going to spray the ground for, first for ant. We're, we're going to sit down underneath a fig tree, and we're going to have a Bible study. You know how many people want to come because it's going to be outside, and it's going to be under a fig tree? You mean it's not in a building? They'd be turned off by the idea. By Isaiah 34.4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. The earth is gone. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falls from the vine. As falling figs from the fig tree. Okay, we got a time of peace. Now we got a time where the earth is going bye-bye. 
Peter says with a fervent heat, he says the stars are going to fall like the leaves and the figs falling off a tree. Then after that, there'll be the great white throne judgment. So we got a time of rest. We got a fruit that's sweet, a good fruit, not an evil fruit. And now we have an illustration of the fig tree. Everything's coming down off the fig tree. And that's what the end of the earth and the, and the solar systems in the universe is going to be described as. Jeremiah 8.13. What about this fig tree? Jeremiah 8.13 I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. They shall be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and these things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Now here's a judgment upon sin. My people... Because of your sin, I'm going to make you bare and naked, like a branch that has no fruit. Well, we had the same thing with, with you know, Nathan L. and people sitting underneath their fig tree. And now we have two verses where there's a judgment of God. Hosea 9.10. Daniel, Hosea. You're not going to get this kind of study in your average typical church because we've got to finish up 45 minutes. And I, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. The sheep are not getting fed. So they're dumb. And guess who's going to stand account for those sheep being dumb at the judgment seat of Christ? They're pastors. Because we're such in a rush. I don't care what you feel, I don't care what you, how you feel, I don't care what you guys say. It's the truth. I'd be starving if I didn't study my Bible. Well, you know, it's only three times a week. Bible study Fridays is only Friday, one day a week, and look at all we've learned, look at all we've covered. If I can do this in one week, imagine what you do three times a week. Well, you know, they fall asleep and they know... Because you, you give them something that's over their head because you haven't given it to them before. Or what you're doing is you're so boring, you're putting them to sleep. It may not be the sheep, it may be what you're doing. I've sat under some boring preachers. Good night. Jose, uh, yeah, Hosea 9.10 I found Israel. That's us. That's not us. That's Israel. Like grapes in the wilderness. They're wild grapes. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. I saw Israel as grape and figs. But then he went after Baal Peor gods. And they separated themselves unto their shame. And they abominate. Them grapes and them fig trees that God says, Hey, the nation of Israel, you went and got sour on me. You went and got bad. You were a good, sweet fruit. Now you became, an, Jesus said, an evil fruit. They changed what the good fruit we read in Judges to, now they're an evil fruit. They're not delicious. Micah 4.4, 4, right after Jonah. 
Micah 4 4. Jonah did Micah. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his face. Or back to Nathan L again. Or Nathan L. And none shall make afraid, for the mouth of the Lord holds it spoken. That's a millennial passage. Gee, I wonder why Nathaniel wanted to king Jesus. He thought Jesus was going to bring him the kingdom. He's going to go back to that fake dream. Just sit there and, oh, we're at peace. Thousand year peace. No, I don't want the tribulation of the Messiah. I don't want the Messiah to be beaten. I don't want the Messiah to be crucified. I want to go sit back underneath my tree. Because you know what happens after the Messiah is suffered and died according to the Scriptures? And is buried and rose again according to the Scriptures? You know what happened? He ascended up to the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father. And the Christians are persecuted throughout the book of Acts and the life of the church. And if you're not a good Christian, you're not a Christian of the Bible, and if you're sitting underneath your, your fig tree and everybody loves you, the Bible says, marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. And know that all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. What are you doing sitting underneath your fig tree when we're supposed to be out there? It's not the time to sit underneath the fig tree. Not in the church age. You know what God gives us? He gives us armor. Why do we go to armor? Because we got to fight a war. If you're fighting in the war, you don't go sitting underneath your fig tree. That's for the nation of Israel after the time of Jacob's trouble. Where Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords seated upon the throne of David. That's the time to sit underneath your fig tree. You know what a lot of Christian churches are doing? They're sitting underneath their fig tree today. And their evil fruit. But we got more. Zechariah 3.10. A couple books over to the right. Just before Malachi. Zechariah 3.10. Looking at a millennial passage again. So when we see Nathanael, Nathanael, I'd say his name 1,400 different times. When we see Nathanael in chapter 1, what do we see? We see a picture of peace. We see a picture of the millennium. But it's not. Because Jesus is going to start healing sick people. Jesus is going to start cashing out the devils. That's not their Messiah they wanted. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall, er, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. That's what Philip did with Nathaniel. But we're not looking at the, the righteous lion of the tribe of Judah coming to reign. We're looking at the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. Nathaniel looked over Calvary, over the church age, and he saw, hey, we're sitting underneath our fig tree. All right. Peace has come. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Verse 19. More scriptures. Matthew 21, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he's walking. He's walking down the path, and here's a fig tree. He came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow thence forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. This is where Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now, the fig tree is a type of Israel. You know what Jesus did? He came to Israel. He found no fruit. 
And when the disciples saw it, they marveled and said, How soon is this fig tree withered away? Jesus says, Very I say unto you, if you had faith and no doubt, you should not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also say unto this mountain, and then we get the greatest thing of faith, belief, and ask. Jesus came to the fig tree and says, Oh, I want a fig. There was no fig. It's not the millennial time. Peter's like, wow, I can't believe what happened to that tree. Not time. 24-32. Matthew 24-32. Coming the time of, of prophecy and Jacob's trouble... He says, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branches are yet tender, and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Well, when Jesus came to that tree, and here's the leaves, here, here's summer, it's almost summertime. The fig tree, you can tell by the fig tree, hey, summer's almost here. The fig trees that give us prophecy. The point out. Oh, Mark eleven thirteen. Mark eleven thirteen. Mark 11, 13. Again, seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came happily they might find anything thereon. When he came into it, found nothing but leaves. Summer's coming. You know what's coming for Jesus right now at this time of fig tree? Not suffering. Not summer. Suffering. Not summer. Suffering is coming. Then you'll want to go back underneath this fig tree. It ain't time yet. It ain't time. Luke 13. Gospel of Luke 13. Verse 6 and 7. There's coming a time of peace. This, you know what? We've got to have time where, the, where there is no fruit yet. There's hardly any fruit of the nation of Israel. Now, there are Jews that get saved, but the time of the, the, the leaves are, and the, the fruit come is the millennium for Israel, when every man sits underneath that bush and tree. verse 6 and 7. Then he said unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Well, here's a fig tree that has no figs. And cut it down. Why come from this? Get rid of it. Destroy it. And he answered said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig it up and dung it. Fertilize it. If it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. Man, that, that's judgment again. That's judgment. If a Jewish man or woman does not produce food, food, fruit, John the Baptist said the axe is put to the trees and the, you know, and the trees are put to the fire. There's no fruit. Boy, the, the fig tree pictures judgment. The fig tree pictures the end of the earth and the universe. And the fig tree pictures peace. How are you going to get it all right? You've got to rightly divide. Nathaniel said, oh, the king of Israel. Not yet. 
21, 29. Luke 21, 29. There was a king that had a boil. If you turn to Luke 21, 29. And he was going to die. And God told Isaiah, go tell the king, set thy house in order, you're dying. And he repented and got right. And God told Isaiah, listen, I'm going to give you 15 more years. And then God told Isaiah, take a lump of figs and put it under boil, and he was healed. So there's fig fruit that brings a dying man life. Verse 29, he spake unto them, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. Again, when now sheep forth, you see and know your own selves that the man at summer is now right at hand. The leaves of the fig tree that have not produced fruit yet is Jacob's trouble. And with, with the Antichrist in the last three and a half years, remember I see no fruit on it, three years. Any fruit that's taken off would be the Antichrist eliminating Jews. But when Jesus Christ comes at the second advent and he comes to that fig tree, this time he's not going, he's not going to find leaves only, this time he's going to find some fruit. And he's going to carry that fruit over into Jerusalem. But if you're no fruit, or you're no good fruit, he ain't going to carry you over. He's going to stomp you out. Then he'll carry you over into the nation of Israel. He'll carry you into the land, into Jerusalem. And there you'll sit under your vine and under your fig tree. As we saw Nathaniel in John chapter 1. King. Nathaniel sitting under his vine tree, king, son of God, rabbi. That is a millennial passage. One more place. Revelation 6.13. Revelation 6.13. I mean, that's scripture with scripture. And anything else, you're wrong. How dare you? Ah, the Bible says you're wrong, not me. And I'm sorry, and if I step on anybody's toes, well, I'm not sorry, because if I stepped on your toes with the Bible, let me step on your toes with both feet wearing boots. Because it's Bible. Now, if I stepped on your toes wrongfully, then I'll apologize. Revelation 6.13. And the stars of him fell onto the earth, even as a big tree cast his offer and timely fig as the end of the earth and end of the So the fig tree pictures peace. It pictures judgment. And it pictures the end of Mother Earth, Mother Moon, and everything in the universe. Now, shall we study the Bible like we're doing and get all the information? Or shall we, as we go to John chapter 2 next week, all right, John chapter 2 in one day, then the week after that we'll take John chapter 3. All right, let me tell you the truth. And I, I, don't care, I don't care who's listening to this. I know it goes on. When you're going to teach one chapter of the Bible every week, you're... You're not giving all the information out. You're losing valuable information. And I, I've had people complain. They're not here now. You're taking too long. I think we're going at the right speed. Now next week, well, let's, let's go real quick. John chapter 2. I mean, let's look at it. And I've already got John chapter 2. 
Now, John chapter 2 is 25 verses. All right? We got the marriage of Cana. We've got Jesus going to Capernaum, the first Passover. Uh, I'm just looking at it briefly. We got Jesus in the temple te tearing the tables down. Now, if we were to do John chapter 2 only next week, you know I would not get to the part where Jesus overturns the table. We wouldn't be able to do that. And you know if Jesus were to go into churches today, many churches you kick those tables over. And I had one church one time told a missionary, you can't do that. And you can't sell stuff in the church. Amen. Glory to God. That guy stole stuff out of his car, the back of his car in the parking lot. It's still church property. And by the way, selling it in the church parking lot, do you realize where, where they had the table set up? It was on the outside of the temple. It was in the courtyard of the temple. How about that? Now, see, we could miss that. Or we can just study it all. We can get all the marriage supper going. I mean, the marriage supper going. We can get all the marriage in Cana. That's how I'm going to do it. Lord God the Father, I just thank you that we've got all the time in the world till you call us home by death or rapture. Lord, if we'd rather learn the Bible than go through the Bible. There's a big difference between going through the Bible and studying the Bible. And Lord, I'd rather study the Bible. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.